you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning, saints out there online. In the book of Genesis, chapter 37, and verses 9 through 11, it says, And he dreamed still another dream. And he told it to his brothers, and they said, Behold. And he, took, he said, Behold, I dreamed another dream. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars bowed to me. And he told it to his father and to his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers indeed come to bow ourselves to the earth before you? And his brothers were jealous of him. But then his father, but then his father observed, considered, meditated, and reflected on his sayings. Church, I want to bring to you the life-changing, life-building, life-blessing uh, series entitled How to Fulfill Your Destiny. How to Fulfill Your Destiny. And this is lesson number three. Say amen. amen. And you should have a worksheet. If you don't have a worksheet, put your hand up because the worksheet is there to help you, guide you, and then uh, allow you to be engaged throughout the process of this teaching. If you need a worksheet, put your hand up. All right, let's have a little review since this is lesson number three. First of all, uh, I want you to know what we, have, what we have already said. And what we've already said is that three main statements, the three main statements for the series is that God has given you a destiny. He's given you a destiny. In other words, his perfect plan for your life. Secondly, you must fulfill your destiny. You must fulfill it. Nobody else can fulfill it. In fact, even God himself can't fulfill it for you. You have to, uh, it's like a contract, offer and acceptance. You must accept it and you must walk in it. Turn to your name and say, you must do it. And then... The good news is you can fulfill your destiny. You can. And how can you do it? Through the three great spiritual laws, spiritual keys of what? Faith, hope, and love. You can do it through faith, hope, and love. I said you can do it through faith, hope, and love. Amen. Now, our object lesson, example for how we can fulfill our destiny, no, no matter what, come what may, is the, is the, uh, the man named Joseph, whose name means added or whose name means increase. And Joseph was the 11th son of his father, uh, Jacob. Uh, Jacob was the grandson of Abraham. So now what we find out is that Joseph, this 11th son of Jacob, uh, his destiny was revealed to him through dreams which really, these two dreams were really one dream. So his destiny was revealed to him through dreams. And uh, we find out that we need to change. Okay, we find out we need to change. First of all. Okay, here we go. Little technical change. We're going to be all right. Lord, let's see. It's in there. Okay, there it's kicking in. All right, now we can bring it down too, too high. Okay, Joseph had these two dreams, and they were really one dream. And they, and they were that what? His father, his mother, and his brothers were all going to bow to him. Now, you know what that means, right? If they were going to bow to him, that means he was going to be what? Raised up. Yeah, he was going to be blessed and highly favored and raised up even though he was the 11th son. That's important because in Jewish tradition, who's going to get the inheritance? Who's supposed to get the blessing? The firstborn son, right? The firstborn, not the 11th. So God was doing a thing according to his will. And I want you to know that God has a plan for your life and he may end up revealing it to you also through dreams. Uh, that's one way he can do it. He can do it through visions. He can do it through somebody prophesying. But the point is he'll reveal the end of the destiny to you. In other words, like the saying goes, God 
sees the end from the beginning, well then he allows you to see the end from the beginning, and, but then he'll show it to you in a, in a flash of, of time, in a moment in time, and then, and then it's gone, and then now that you know where you're trying to get to, now you got to what? Walk it out. Turn to him and say, walk it out. Yeah, now you got to walk it out. And you know what walking it out means, right? It means there's going to be some challenges along the way. There's going to be some things along the way, but what you have to... Uh, what you have to keep hold of is the end. You have to keep hold of the of the end of the thing. You have to keep hold of in your mind. You have to keep hold of the fact that I know where this is going. Yeah, Doesn't matter what it's showing. I know where this is going. Yeah, Somebody say I know where this is going. Say so in the end, in the end. I, win. I win. Amen. That's Amen. what you got to do. Amen. Amen. So listen. So this is what we said that there may be challenges along the way, but you you know where your destiny is. And then we said your destiny can seem to be derailed because of jealousy. In other words, in this case, jealousy uh, caused Joseph to be put down. Now, we talked about this before. Joseph shared his uh, dream with those close to him. And we said that it seemed like a bad thing because you know that people can't take it a lot of times when you tell them what God's going to do for you. But in this particular case, it actually was meant to be because God needed a record uh, in the earth that what he was going to do is what he already said he was going to do. In other words, what he eventually did do was it's not something that just happened as an afterthought. It, it was already planned. It was already purposed. So then when Joseph told his brothers, you all are going to bow to me, uh, that was the day of, 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 of recording it. That was the day when it was recorded that, hey, no matter what happens in my life, this is going to happen. And, and, and let you be a witness in the earth for it. Amen? Yeah. Cause, cause, and also, here's another thing. This is something else God told me this last week. Now, I'm glad I mentioned this. Not only did he tell his brothers what was going to happen to him uh, so that they would be a witness, but the truth of the matter is he told them because it involved them too. Yes. It involved them. It involved them. So when it happened... They were like, oh, I remember. He did say that. See, so he was letting them know. It's going to come a time. You might as well get your little feelings ready. Y'all going to have to bow to me. I'm going to be in charge. So Y'all might as well get ready. But it involved it. All right, let's move on. So faith, hope, and love, what we found out is the jealousy caused them to put him down in a pit. And faith, hope, and love can keep you in the valley of the shadow of death. Faith, hope, and love can keep you in the valley of the shadow of death until God shows you a way of escape. That's what we talked about last week. Amen? Amen. In other words, there are some people that when they get a sense or an inkling that God is getting ready to do something in your life, their jealousy will cause them to put you in the pit. You know, cause you to be demoted, cause you to be fired, cause you to be on probation, cause you to be... You understand? It'll put you in a pit. But all you have to do is stay in faith hope, and love, and that will bring you through the valley of the shadow of death. Amen? Amen. And it will bring you to a, a way of escape because God said so. Yeah. God said he won't allow you to bear more than you are able. In fact, when I was at that uh, men's breakfast yesterday, it was so funny. It was like the Lord was, you know, the Lord was just kind of winking at me. He was winking at me. Because guess what? I was at the men's breakfast and one of the scriptures that was prominent at that breakfast, they could have talked about any scripture throughout the whole Bible. But that one came up. First Corinthians 13 came up again. It came up a couple of times that God will not allow you to bear that above that which you are able. And will, with the temptation, do what? Make a way of escape. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Notice he didn't say he's always going to take the, the pit away. He didn't say he's always going to take the problem away. He said, but with the problem, with the pit, he will also, somebody say, also, make a way of escape. And then it says, so that you may be able to bear it. In other words, just when you think you can't take another uh, look anymore, when you think you can't go another further, that's when the Lord is, is going to open up that door and make a way for you to ease the pain. Make a, that thing comes in a lot of ways. Like I told you with my wife, it was a it was a shot. You know, she literally needed a shot, a narcotic shot. It was so much pain. But whatever that door is, whether it's somebody who's just, you know, getting on your last nerve and you trying to move out or get out or whatever. Some people are in a whole lot of pits in a lot of different ways. Your pit could be, uh, 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 it could be physical pain. Your pit could be a person. 
You're picked to be a job. You're picked to be a lot of things. But when you feel like you just can't take any more, God will open up a door. And you better step on in it and step on out from it. Give God some praise. Amen. 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 And what we found out last week was the way of escape is what's called providence. And I love that. Did anybody learn something about providence last week? Yes. Providence is not only, see, whenever you think of providence, think of Jehovah Jireh, the God who sees ahead and provides for you. Jeho somebody say, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh sees ahead, sees ahead and, provides and provides for me. In other words, he doesn't, watch this now, he doesn't provide for you just when you need what you need. He provided already for you before you knew you needed it. Yes, yes. That's, what it that's Jehovah Jireh. Yes. Before, listen, way before, if you, have, you say, where is Jehovah Jireh found in the Bible? Anybody know where Jehovah Jireh is found in the Bible? It's found in the scripture in Genesis where uh, Abram uh, takes Isaac up to Mount Moriah and is getting ready to sacrifice his, his son of promise. And once the Lord stays his hand from killing his son, he says, thinking, oh my God, well, now that I'm not going to kill my son, I still need an offering for the Lord. And he hadn't seen any other offering. In fact, remember on the way up there, his son said, where? he says, Father, I see the what? He said, I see the fire and I see the temple. Where's the sacrifice? <laughs> he, he's like, brother, you hit. Oh, no. <laughs> he said, so, 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 so what's, the, once God stayed Abraham's hand from killing his son, they looked around and said, well, where's the sacrifice? And there was a what? There was a ram stuck in the thicket of the bush. Somebody said, God already knew that they would need that ram. See, see, Abraham didn't know, but God knew. And there are some things you don't know that you're going to have need of. But God already knows. And when you catch up to God and you say, God, I need this, God said, I already knew. Here's the, here's the ram. It's right there and right on time. Give God some praise. And right on time. And right on time. So that's providence. Now, Joseph was sold into slavery, all right, because his providence was these Ishmaelite uh, slave traders who happened to come by his pit at just the right time. I mean, just the right time. That, 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 once again, that... God knew he would need it. Joseph didn't. See, Joseph didn't know he would need it. That's my point. Joseph didn't know he would need some Ishmaelite traders to be driving by, riding by, because he didn't know he was going to be what? Down in the pit. He, he, didn't know that when, he didn't know that when he went and told his brother, daddy said, y'all need to stop sloughing off, you need to get right, come back to, you know, bring, you know, bring the, the crop back and all this stuff, that they were going to be so angry with him that they were going to want to kill him. And that Instead of killing him by their hand with a sword, they threw him down in a pit and they were really going to say, and, leave, and basically leave him for dead. Yes. So he had no idea that God was going to send some Ishmaelite slave traders uh, by just that time to pull him out. And this is where we left off. We said that God had these men to pull him up out of the pit, take him to Egypt, and he was sold into slavery and he was eventually sold into Potiphar's house. And in Potiphar's house, we are finding out that like, like the sister said this morning, we have to be careful not to judge anything before it's time. We have to be careful not to judge anything by natural appearances, but judge by a spiritual judgment. Because what seems to be, somebody say seems, seems to, be. to be. What seems to be bad really could not only be good, but it can actually be a part of your destiny. I need to say that again. I said... Now listen, what seems to be bad can actually not only be good, but it can actually be an integral, key, essential part of your destiny. In other words, God's divine plan for your life. Today's subtitle under lesson number three is entitled Preserved and Promoted in Potiphar's House. Preserved and Promoted in Potiphar's House. Notice, he was sold into slavery. And now, 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 here's an interesting point. Of all the times that he could have been down in that pit, God sent these slave traders, right? Well, first of all, there didn't have to be nobody. I mean, come on, this is a death. There didn't have to be nobody passing by, right? And then of all the people passing by, listen now, of all the people passing by, they were slave traders. 
Suppose it had just been somebody passing by who was just a, a, a regular merchant. Maybe they would have gotten him out of the pit and said, hey, brother, God bless you. Who did this to you? I don't know, but, you know, I'm glad we got you out. Then Joseph would have gone on his way. No, they happened to be slave traders on their way to where? Egypt. Where was his destiny? In Egypt. And then when he gets to Egypt, okay, he's on the, he's on the, uh, uh, the slave block, right? The trading block. Well, Potiphar ain't the only person in Egypt trying to get slaves. But it just so happened that what? He gets sold to who? Potiphar. Now listen now, he could have gotten sold to a lot of people. Who was Potiphar? He was a chief official in the Pharaoh's empire. And if you study it out, watch this now. Guess who Potiphar was? Potiphar, listen now, Potiphar was the warden of the prison. Now, you know, in the natural, to get sold to that man is not a good thing. He's like, I don't want to get sold to the warden of the prison. But God is going to use even that, like I said, preserve and promote it in part of his house. You got to be careful because if you, if you, live, by, if you live by natural reasoning and, and live by natural perception, you'll miss God every time. In fact, I think I need to work a little something right here. I need to work on something right here. Listen, I need to tell you all this. And you need to get this. There are two things. There are two things that actually uh, 